Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at mapping in Java streams. First, let's take a look at something that doesn't work and we'll see how we can actually make it work. So one of the most basic kinds of streams that we've seen so far in these tutorials is int stream. Let's create a stream. And I'm going to call this variable list one because I want to collect this together in a list and I want to use int stream to generate some integers. So let's say int stream dot range and create a range of integers from zero to 10. So we're going to go from zero up to and including nine. I'm also going to turn the formatter off so that I can format this in the way that I want because the Eclipse formatter doesn't seem to be very good for streams. Now you might think if you want a list of numbers, you can just collect this into a list. And we've already seen an example of how to do that. So we should be able to use collectors.toList to collect all the stream items into a list. Let's add the import for collectors. And in fact, we get an error here and this doesn't work. I'm gonna just format this a little bit here. Why doesn't this work? Well, int stream just doesn't allow you to collect together elements in a stream in this way. Int stream is a primitive stream with a relatively low overhead and it just generates primitive ints. If we actually want to be able to collect this together, we can use the boxed method to box this to a, a stream of integer objects and then we can actually do this. Now one of the most common things to do with a stream is to change the elements in the stream from one type of element to another element. And you can do that with the map stream operation. So let's suppose we want to turn these integers into doubles. We can do that like this. We insert map into the stream operations. And now we just need a Lambda expression that will accept each of the stream elements in turn and return in each case a new element, which is the element that we want to insert into the new stream. And you can think of this as changing the items in the stream, but really we're creating a new stream here. So let's call each element n for number, let's say. And all I'm gonna do here is just cast n to a double. And then let's take a look at the result. So we'll do sysout and let's just print list one. So if I run this, you can see now we've got doubles in our stream and we're then collecting them together in a list at the end. Now map is a very flexible method. We can really turn any type into any other type as long as we have some way of doing that that actually makes sense. Let's copy all of this, create a duplicate of it. I'm gonna to have to use shift tab to put that back in place there. Let's call this stream two and do something similar but a little bit more ambitious. So supposing I want to turn these ints into a stream of strings, we can quite easily do that. Again, we need a Lambda expression here. And this time I'm going to use string.format and we'll supply each element in the stream, each integer to the format method in string. And let's just have a format string here to specify how we should turn it into a string. Let's say something like option number colon percent D because we're dealing with decimals. And then if we run this, let's take a look. Now we've got a stream of strings, which again, we've collected together, of course, in a list. For my next trick, I'm going to turn a map of names and ages into a stream of person objects. So if you saw the last video, you'll have seen my person class here. It's very simple. We've got private attributes of name and age. We've got a constructor that lets us set those. We've got get methods for both of them and we've got a two string method. So I'm going to copy this entire class here and paste it into our current project. Now I'm going to create a map of ages and names. So let's go down here a bit and I'll put it right here. Let's create a map of string, which is going to be the name versus integer, which is going to be the age. And I'll call this people map and we'll set that equal to map.of and use this 
really nice map.of initialization method. So let's have, and I'm just going to use characters from Great Expectations to save me having to think up names and ages. Pip23, that's a very good book by the way, Estella23 will have Miss Havisham, who apparently in the book is only about 56, although I always think of her as much older. And we'll have a character that I don't even remember, because it's a long while since I read this book, called Magwitch, who apparently is 60. I'll add the input for map there. Now let's turn this map into a stream. So again, I'm going to turn the formatter on and off. Let's get rid of this. And then we're going to say people map dot entry set, because remember we can turn the entries into a map, into a stream. Let's do for each here and put in there system dot out colon colon print line. And first let's just take a look at what we've got. So we've got a bunch of map entries exactly as we expect. And this is just using the for each from Java lang iterable. We haven't actually got a stream yet. But I'm going to turn this into a stream, these entries, with the stream method. And then we can use the map method to turn the map entries into person objects. And the most obvious way to do that would be to get each entry in our Lambda expression and then return new person. And we just need e.get key, comma, e.get value because we can supply these values, the name and the age, to the constructor of person. And when we run this, we find we've got a bunch of person objects. So this is displaying using the toString method of that person object. Now, if we actually only wanted to initialize each person object with one value, like an age or a name, we could actually do something a lot simpler than that. Let's go to our person class and give it a new constructor here. I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to remove age from it. And let's say if we don't supply age, we'll set it to minus one, just to indicate that the age hasn't been set. So now we can create person objects just with a string. And let's go down here and I'm going to copy what I've done right here. And instead of creating a stream from the entry set, let's create a stream from the key set of that map. So that will just be the keys in the map, which are just strings. They're just names. And now, instead of doing all of this, well, one thing I could do is just supply the elements of the stream to person like that. And if we run that, that's going to work. And you can see we've got a bunch of entries with the age set to minus one now. Let's put a blank line in just to make this a little tiny bit clearer. So that's what we're doing now. But we could simplify this simply by using a method reference to the constructor of the person object. And that would then look like this. We just type person colon colon new, and then we've got a reference to the constructor. And that will also transform our stream, in this case of strings, into a stream of person objects. So you can see the map method is very flexible. And I think map together with filter are really two of the most important intermediate operations in streams. Often you've got a list or a map or whatever, and you just want to do a quick little bit of filtering and mapping, and then you've got a whole new collection of objects. Before we finish, just a reminder that if you go to my site, caveofprogramming.com, you can find lots of relevant courses on Java and other topics. Some of them are free and some of them you have to pay for. This is how I make a living. And for this video, I'm going to leave a 30% discount link to my advanced Java course in the description of this video. I actually cover streams, method references, and Lambda expressions in my Java 11 for Complete Beginners course. So if you want a systematic introduction to all of those, then do check the previous video for a discount link for this course. So that's caveofprogramming.com. Now, eventually we're going to build up some really complicated examples using streams. We're going to see how far we can push it, how much we can actually do just in streams, just for the fun of it. Although usually, as I say, I think you just want one or two methods most of the time, but you can build really complicated streams if you want to. And we are going to be looking at that. We're going to be looking at how you can, for example, read a file and process it. 
just using streams. But first we need to focus on a few more basic things and we're almost there, I think. But we're going to keep going a bit with some basic concepts. In the next video, unless I change my mind, we're going to take a look at flat map, which is an extremely useful method that we definitely need to cover. So that's it for this video. And until next time, happy coding.